Hi, welcome to this lecture and thanks for listening. The aim of this talk is to introduce you to the concepts of network density and transitivity. Now suppose this is you, behind your laptop, working hard on your sociology course, which you seem to enjoy really a lot. And suppose we look at a sample of your social connections. Three of them are your friends, your strong ties. And imagine we look at these two other people who also belong to your network. But they are weak ties, such as a neighbor or a teacher. You know them, but not very well. So what sociologists like to know is how well your social ties are connected to each other. Does Diana hang out with Claire, for example? And do Claire and Brad know each other? And are Brad and Emma connected? The reason sociologists want to know this is because it tells us something about how cohesive your personal network is. A very cohesive network is a network in which many of your connections know each other. And such cohesive networks can generate strong solidarity, trust and norm enforcement, as we will see. And this will be the opposite of a cohesive network. It's a very fragmented network. Most of your connections don't know each other. And such fragmented networks do not generate strong solidarity, trust and norm enforcement. So what sociologists like to know is, do people nowadays have cohesive networks? Or do our connections hardly know each other? The way they measure cohesion in networks is by looking at density. Network density captures the ratio of all realized ties in a network to the number of possible ties in that network. The network density measure D ranges from zero, there are no ties between actors, so extremely fragmented, to one. And all actors in that case are connected to each other, so very cohesive. How many ties there are possible between actors depends on whether this we study directed or undirected networks. In a network with directed ties, there are two times as many connections possible as in the same network with only undirected ties. Now let's see what happens when we have an undirected network of five persons. This means the number of actors k is five. And if k is five, then there are 10 ties possible in that network. And we can see that there are only two connections in a network. And this means that the density is 0.2. In other words, 20% of all possible ties are realized. That's a rather fragmented network. And in this case, there are eight realized ties, which means that the density is 0.8, so much more cohesive. So let's come back to our question. How cohesive are personal networks in contemporary societies? Sociological studies show that when you look at friendship networks, the density is around 0.5. And this means that around 50% of our friends are also befriended with each other. But these are strong ties among our friends. When you look at whether they know each other, then the density goes up to around 75%. Now let's see what this means when you look at a triad. A triad is a network of three persons and the possible ties between them. Amy is befriended with Brad and Claire. And this means that there is a 75% chance that Brad and Claire know each other. And when they indeed know each other, we speak of transitivity. We say that the triad is closed. All three are connected to each other. And so when we look at your core network, it's very likely that many of your friends know each other. And this transitivity tendency is a very important stylized fact. So if you are ego A and you have two persons B and C, then B and C are very likely to be connected. Now, according to Granovetter, strong ties always show this pattern of triadic closure and transitivity. And he called a triad in which A is befriended with B and C, but B and C not to each other, a forbidden triad. 
It's very unlikely this happens, according to Granerfeather, for many reasons. One reason is opportunity. For example, you organize a party, invite all your friends, and then your friends get to know each other. But regarding weak ties, this transitivity tendency is less likely to occur. Emma may be your boss, for instance, and Floyd may be your uncle. And that makes them less likely to know each other than your friends do. Now, if you organize a party, then you're unlikely to invite both Emma and Floyd. So how often transitivity happens depends on the strength of ties. If you look at your core network, your strongest ties, then triadic closure is very common. Your friends know each other. But the more you zoom out and look at your weaker ties, then transitivity occurs less often. So that's another important stylized fact. Transitivity increases with tie strength. This is called the forbidden triads tendency. And so your network might look something like this. Your friends know each other, but Emma and Floyd, your weaker ties, do not. You are the one actually who connects them. In summary, when you want to study how cohesive networks are, how strongly our friends are connected, for example, you can look at density. Sociological research shows that our connections likely know each other. This is called the transitivity tendency. And this pattern is particularly strong among our, our friends, the strong ties. If you take two of your friends, they probably know each other. And when they indeed do, the triad is closed. Kanafetter then coined the term forbidden triad to indicate a situation in which your friends do not know each other. This is not happening according to Kanafetter, or at least very rare. But when you look at your weaker ties, you'll see that triadic closure is far less common. The forbidden triad tendency is that transitivity is very common in core networks, so your friends know each other, but happens less often in weaker ties, so your boss and uncle don't know each other. Okay, that's it. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for listening.